Behind the Notes, the official Music Notes podcast. Conversations with professionals throughout the music industry. Find us at musicnotes.com for all your sheet music needs. And now your host, Lucas Kaler. Happy Halloween, Jillian. Ooh. <laughs> Were you waiting Happy for that? Happy Halloween. Were you prepared for that? I was prepared. Was yep. I did vocal warm ups in the car this morning <laughs> just to do that on this podcast. Oh, that's really funny. <laughs> that's super funny. Well, yeah, this is our. Uh, this is our first Halloween episode, yeah, yeah, because we will be one year into this in January, so we're getting close, and Woo-hoo. they the they have not turned us uh, taken us off the air yet, so yeah, they haven't canceled us. I know, so it's we're pretty gonna good. Keep, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna yeah. keep going. But uh, we were talking about what we should do for this Halloween episode, and and since it's a scary season and people get frightened in this season, we <laughs> thought stage fright might be a good topic stage of conversation. Fright. What scares musicians more than getting on stage? It's very, very common. Mm-hmm. It's and not just around Halloween. Right, right. <laughs> for, for any sure. occasion. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. such a, I think it's something that every single performer, not just musicians, anybody who's got to get on stage at some point has yeah. to deal with it at some point. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Any performer. Like yeah. I think about people that struggle too with like public speaking. That's right, like the right. same thing. I feel like. I, I think that's a good example of it. You know, I think yeah. a lot of people who may not have uh, had a chance to perform music before can relate to the public speaking thing. Yeah, and I know for yeah. me, it's the same type of anxiety. It's the same type of, of nervousness. Yeah. Yeah. My body interprets the fear the same way. For sure. Right. Mm-hmm. I think I, I feel a little more at ease, honestly, with music than public speaking just oh, because, yeah. well, I guess it depends on the context. But yeah, so I think somehow with music, at least ju- it just just personally, mm-hmm. I the the fear that if I've ever had like fear before performing, it's it dissipates, I think, faster just because the music oh, okay. distracts my mind a little bit more than yes. just having to get up and just you know, do a speech or like a presentation for class right. or something like that. It's it's easier for the fear to kind of subside for me when mm-hmm. I'm performing versus that. But a lot of people, it's the opposite. A lot of people yeah. would, you know, go up and and public speak, but be absolutely mortified to perform in front of <laughs> others. So it's just, it varies, I think, from person to person. No, that's fair. And and with public speaking, I think, I, me personally, I'm a little more conscious of what I'm doing when I'm speaking publicly versus when I'm playing music. Mm, Yeah. When I'm playing music, I'm very in my head and I don't have to worry about what I'm saying because I'm not saying anything with my voice, but I I am saying something with the instrument, but I find that uh, that's easier for me to do subconsciously. Yeah. Whereas if I'm giving a speech or giving a talk, uh, I'm actually giving a, uh, I'm on a panel next week uh, for the WMEA conference. I'm a little nervous about that, to be perfectly honest, you know, just because it's been a while since I've gotten up and having to give any kind of speech before. And and again, when I'm in the middle of speaking to a a big audience, it's easier for my brain to start saying, oh, you're going to trip up your words. Oh, you're going to do this. Same for me. Whereas if I'm playing a song, I don't know, the subconscious is, is what's has taken over what my body's yes, doing anyway. I agree. You know what I mean? So right. I could kind of rely on my sub. It, it distracts my subconscious more so than when I'm speaking. Yeah, that's exactly Does what that I was trying sense? to say. Yep, yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah, I've, I've definitely noticed that. But so uh, talking about being nervous before performing, uh, yeah. when, when, when do you feel like you start feeling it? Like, is it right before you get on stage? Is it a couple of days before when you know you have something coming up? Is it the middle of the show all of a sudden do you get nervous? When, could you pinpoint it? Is it consistent I even? No. I mean for me I I honestly have not experienced a ton of stage fright when it comes okay. to performing. The the times where I have experienced I feel like those feelings is before something like an audition. Yeah. Rather than oh, just sure. like a performance. Mm-hmm. And when I think about that, I mean but I definitely have in performing but I think it's just more frequent for me in with the stakes of an audition or a something you're you know trying out for stakes have play a big role for you yes okay they do and for some reason my brain i mean calculates you know an audition as higher stakes for some reason Mm. just anxiety wise than than just a performance even which is funny because i would much rather 
perform for thousands of people and mm-hmm. I don't think I would probably get super nervous at all versus if I had to audition for three people I would be way more nervous mm, okay. which is really interesting but that's just how my brain <laughs> so works. is it a, a question when you say audition do you mean like auditioning for a band or auditioning for a music program at a school or yeah I'm what just you- thinking about like the feelings I had like when I did um juries in college yeah. or as a kid when I competed in piano festivals and I guess it was less of an audition but like a performance for a competition or that sort of thing um, where there was just a panel of three four judges Mm -hmm. just watching me in silence that was a lot more nerve-wracking for me than just any other setting I've been in getting up and performing with a band or solo Mm -hmm. but those those feelings yeah I think the bulk of it for me I think occurs before like right before okay maybe like an hour or two before Uh, I start feeling anxious for it. And then it kind of snowballs. And then like right before I'm like, I don't know, I have things that I do to kind of help my body at least calm down. And then usually once I get into it, it starts to dissipate a little bit. But the height of it for me is usually probably, yeah, like, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour before performing. Yeah. It's when it starts to feel very real. Yeah. You know, like you're on your way there. Like, oh, like that's almost like, Sorry, go ahead. No, that's what I was just mm-hmm. going to say. I've, I've, I think a lot of the times for me is when I'm on the way there thinking yeah, about it or when yeah, I'm yeah. walking into the building before it's going to happen. Sure. It's like, oh. <laughs> it, it reminds me of the build up to a plane taking off. Like yeah. you're boarding, you're getting there and you know you're about to start moving 500 yeah. miles an hour, you know, but you're not just yet. And it's yeah. like the engines are getting louder and the people are getting settled in and the room's getting quieter, I guess. And it's, you're, you're, you're starting to really understand something's about to pop off here. You know what I right. mean? And there's that build there that, um, I, I know for me, that's when I start getting nervous about an airplane. And so I think it's kind of a similar thing uh, to what you're referring, uh, about how it's, it's that half hour or so before the action. Yeah, like you right know. when the buildup starts to become real was right. a good way <laughs> that you put it. Yeah, mm-hmm. is that it was, how? When do you start feeling? Uh, it the it really really varies, and it's, yeah. it's it's one of those things I've gone through um, many different phases of it over the years. You know, because I've done this for a while now. Yeah. Um, when I was younger and I was bad at music, <laughs> I had no fear at all. <laughs> Like when no I was fear. terrible at it, <laughs> when I should have been the most nervous about doing the worst job, um, oh, that's really funny. I couldn't care less. It, like it didn't mean it, it didn't mean yeah, it didn't mean much anything to me. I was good then, and then as I got better, started getting paid for it. You know what I mean? Started yeah. um, touring. That's when it started building up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it would be initially started with kind of what you're talking about, where it would be kind of right before. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times. It would subside pretty quickly once I started, but the yeah. buildup could be re- kind of rough. And particularly like when you're on the road and you're going and you're playing, uh, you're on a tour, you're going to maybe a venue you've never been or someplace you've been, but you're not really familiar with the people or the place or anything like mm-hmm. that. Y- you have to sit for a long time after sound check, but before the show. Mm-hmm. You know, you might get there at two in the afternoon, do the sound check, but you're not playing until eight o'clock at night. You know what I mean? So from three, four o'clock till eight o'clock, you're just waiting and all you try. I, I, it's real easy to just keep thinking, okay, well, what if I do this wrong? And what if I do that wrong? And what if I do this wrong? And then all of a sudden you you start kind of psyching yourself up or psyching yourself out or whatever, you know? Um, So initially that's kind of when I would start really feeling it. And then it sort of turned that timeline extended and it would, and it would go into like the day before, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it, 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 it for some reason couldn't tell you why. It, it the 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 nervousness began earlier, earlier and earlier. Never more than a couple of days, probably. Yeah. You know what I mean? But even I could be playing one show in one town, knowing we got another show in another sh- town the, the next night, and that's what I'm nervous about. Not the show I'm currently playing, right. but the next, the next, one. the next show. Yeah. Which at that point, that's just fear of the unknown. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just not even. There's nothing reasonable in that moment, you know what yeah. I mean? But it is. It's it's an anxiety. It's an it's a it's a yeah, an anxiety. And then the only other times it, it came up after that. So so I kind of got comfortable. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I got comfortable in the moments before, mm-hmm. but then I would start getting nervous on stage, and a lot of that came from uh, mm. worrying about my equipment working properly, which is kind of a weird one, you know what I mean? But like, yeah. 
I only had so much money at the time to have certain types of equipment, and sometimes something didn't go wrong. You know, you you, you feel most comfortable like on the road in a brand new car, right? You know what I mean? You know that car is brand spanking new. It's good to go. Everything's tuned up, ready to roll. Same thing with your equipment. And I was playing electric bass for a lot of that stuff. So I've got the amp, I got the speaker, the the amp head, and the bass itself. You know, if something goes wrong in there, oh, and then you also have cables, you know, Mm -hmm. your power cables uh, and your quarter inch patch cables to go from the instrument to the amplifier. There's a number of things that could start uh, misbehaving, working incorrectly and yeah. in that moment. And then that happens enough times, particularly in the middle of a song, particularly as a bass player, oh my gosh, that would just make me, you know, my chest would lock up and I would yeah. be so afraid if something, even something as simple as your cable has a loose wire in it and it starts mm-hmm. crackling on you or something like that. You know what I mean? It's extremely noticeable because the entire low end of the band just dropped out and that was coming from your hands a moment ago. You know what I mean? Right. So then it, then it kind of turned into like being nervous in the moment, in the middle of things, you know, just worrying about equipment and stuff like that. It was yeah. very rarely ever like, Worrying, I was I didn't know the songs or wasn't going to be able to uh, perform at my best, something like that. That really yeah. was never really the concern. It was it was much more uh, equipment, and then like putting pressure on myself to do really really well and yeah. going too far with that. You know what I mean? Because that's easy to do. You know, musicians. Part of what we do is strive for uh, to get as close to perfection as we can. Mm-hmm. That's that's something we're taught. You know, we're we're never going to be perfect, but we're try we're we're trying to be. We're yeah. looking for it, and and if you let if you let your mind embrace that a little too hard, for me, it turned into anxiousness. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Um, it, it somehow I was putting stakes on myself that weren't there any place other than in my mind you know what i mean yeah um and and i do i think that it came from this like strive for perfection you're never good enough you're never good enough for this and then all of a sudden your body starts to believe it and it's always in the wrong moment (laughs) yeah you know what i mean well it's it's hard because with music and with live performance there is no set measure of what is good enough you know everyone has their own bar that they're trying to hit that's a good point you know so it's like it, i think for me it's hard when there's no like you did this successfully mm-hmm. good job and there's not really a way to tell because i mean the the performance could go so many different ways equipment could fail you could forget something you know you could be heckled in the middle of your show mm-hmm. like a million different things could happen so i feel like that fear of the unknown is kind of perpetuates that anxiety around perfectionism for musicians and just creative people that get up to perform live because all of those factors plus your like the factors you can't control plus the expectations you set on yourself because you care about what you're doing right it's just it's i feel like it's a perfect blend of things for (laughs) to like it makes sense why anxiety brews in you know most all of us for right before a performance because how could it not like (laughs) there's so much that you know you can't control Mm -hmm. and then your own expectations on top of that it's a lot Mm -hmm. it's a lot to handle and then there's no there's no one to tell you like oh yeah that that was you know you you got a 98 percent on this performance like it's not like that you know (laughs) so yeah i mean your friends and your family might be honest with you you know yeah but i mean it doesn't (laughs) that's not the same as like a grade this isn't right uh You'd have to somehow be like, okay, did I hit every? Uh, how? Uh, what percentage of the correct notes did I hit? <laughs> you yeah, know, something yeah. Like, that. like it doesn't really work. And it's just so way. subjective. Like I've had concerts or performances where I've like forgotten the words of one of my songs, or oh, sure. something like that happened. But I still count it though as like a great performance because something you know I was able to recover that or like no one noticed but then these this other thing went really well and so it's like doesn't yeah. necessarily equate so it's hard to to measure yeah mm-hmm. you know well and that's why it's anxiety because anxiety is unreasonable yeah you know what i mean like it doesn't and yet we all very, face it right yeah exactly but it, yeah oftentimes <laughs> yeah. it's your it's your body having this reaction yeah that doesn't have a real basis you think it does feels right. like it does in the moment but yeah not really no <laughs> it's, it's yeah it's, it's so probably an overreaction of some type um yeah and particularly with something like performing because i mean how much of it have we done how much time have we spent preparing like 
We know yeah. what we're doing. Why would it be remotely rational for us to be having this kind of visceral reaction to this thing that right. we do all day, every day? You know, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It doesn't mean our bodies don't do it. And and that's, I, I talk about it like the, the uh, being separate from my body because I do that's what it, what I felt about it personally was it felt it was felt like my body was doing something I wasn't doing it the body yeah. was doing it you know um the body made this decision not me my if I was making the decision right. I would have been like well no we're not going to be nervous you yeah. know <laughs> like we're not going to stress about this. yeah like obviously uh but yeah. what is, what are you going to do you know that's just right. uh that's just the nature of this kind of thing and that yeah. kind of leads me to I'm sorry did you have something else Oh no, I was oh, okay. just I was just agreeing, yeah. Yeah, well so I was just going to say this kind of leads me to um ways to deal with it. At least ways that I found, you know. Yeah. And that's what we thought might be kind of kind of helpful uh about this discussion for for listeners is maybe people could learn some some tactics, some you know. Tools, yeah. Um, but do you have anything specifically you try and do in the moment that kind of gets you there? I mean, yeah, I think a couple of the things of just like concrete things I mm-hmm. think that have helped me. Um, that I've just learned from other people is to, it, for me, it helps to kind of develop a little routine before the performance starts. Like I always oh, take okay. some deep breaths. Yeah. I maybe stretch a little bit. Like I'm talking like five minutes, like sure. just take some deep breaths, stretch a little bit. I, one thing that has helped me a ton is to avoid drinking caffeine. Yep. Right before a performance. That's a big one. Because, or even like within, you know, a few hours before. I try best sure. I can, even if I haven't gotten that much sleep, to avoid it because it will just amplify all those jitters right, for me. Right, And that'll, it, that'll just make it worse. Um, yeah, caffeine jitters are not no, going to help at it's all. Not, gonna not at all. As wonderful yeah. as caffeine is. And like how much you feel like you might need it sometimes before a show. Right. You know, I mean, sometimes you might... Uh, you've got a performance. You're not going on till eleven o'clock at night. Well, you got up at seven. You know, right. you're you're sleepy. Like it's getting towards the end of the evening for you. But now you got to go be on point. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's why I'm harping the, on the caffeine one that you said because right. really it's it's a blessing and a curse. I think in that moment. Yeah, I think a lot of the times I thought that I would be really tired too if I didn't get good sleep or if I was playing a late show sure. or something like that. But it's actually. I feel like over time, it surprised me how much the adrenaline actually wakes you up. Yeah. Once you start playing, I don't really feel as tired. I mean, there's been moments where I, f- I feel tired, but it's like it at least wakes up your subconscious to where right. I always feel, you know, more awake. And then I always regret it when I have had my, you know, Starbucks cold brew two hours <laughs> before the show. Because then I'm like, oh, whoa, just totally. Right. Yeah. Wired playing and your just tempos can't. all speed up. Yeah. Yeah. All your songs are. Yeah. Two clicks faster. Yeah, exactly. But so things like that, I mean are like little things you can do. Deep breaths help me a ton just to center myself. Just take like three deep breaths. Give yourself a moment. Maybe say a couple of positive, you know, affirmations. Like Mm, you're super, like even if it's in your head, just like you're prepared for this. You got this. Or like you, you know, it's such an exciting thing that you get to share this thing that you love with Mm. other people. It's going to be great. Like just a couple of statements like that. Plus the breaths, stretch out a little bit, shake out any jitters you have. Sure, that's what I helps me right before a performance. That makes a lot of sense, uh, and, yeah. and particularly the breathing. And I know that that's almost like breathing's magical, the obvious one. Yeah, but yeah. really, it's. I think anxiousness can can feel like it's like uh, like you're on fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It, like there's just this 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 chaos going on, this constant chaos around that surrounds yeah. you, and you're just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't slow down. Mm-hmm. And the the breathing, I think, is your chance to slow down. You know, to quiet all that noise around you. Um, right. I've heard people describe it that way, uh, where it's yeah, it just it turn down the background noise, so then you can actually focus on your thoughts and focus on whether they're positive or negative thoughts and are yeah. they the thoughts that are going to be most advantageous in this moment or the ones that are going to be detrimental in this moment, you right. know, but if you have so much anxiety and craziness going on surrounding you in that moment, how can you focus on the thoughts? You can't. And I think that the breathing yeah. is an excellent way to get there. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy how easy it is to forget to do. 
Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> isn't that wild? It makes sense if you think about it because mm-hmm. I mean, shortness of breath is a symptom of you know right, when you're exactly. super anxious. Right. But if you force yourself to slow down your breathing, it's like yeah. you're forcing the physical aspect of your anxiety to calm down, and it right. takes the mind with it, so yes. it slows everything down. For just just a few deep breaths, I really mm-hmm. underestimated the power of that for a long time. Yeah, sure. I remember I had I mean I had a lot of anxiety as a kid just about just like random things, and my parents would be like just take some deep breaths, and I was always like that's not gonna help. And then right doing it, yeah, for especially like the stage fright or performance, even when I'm not feeling particularly anxious, it's just a good grounding. You know, it is. It's a grounding thing. Yeah. Yeah. It works really well for me right beforehand. But Mm -hmm. I was trying to think and I was interested to hear your thoughts, too, of like we I mean, we both perform pretty often. Mm -hmm. But maybe I mean, for someone that, you know, is maybe too scared to perform and they haven't yet and want to or people that don't do it frequently. Like, are there any big tactics that you've found are helpful uh, you mean like they know how to do it? They're just too afraid to do it? Yeah, like people that have like paralyzing stage fright. Like people, because uh, I feel sure. like as you, even if you have paralyzing stage fright, right. as you perform, it most of the time gets a little easier each time just because it becomes like more mm-hmm. common. Yeah. But like I'm just thinking, I think there's a lot of musicians out there that are wonderful musicians, but are really like don't perform that often sure. because of their stage fright. Sure. Um, for, for me, at least, uh, preparation, yeah. like to the point where I don't have to think about what I'm doing. I yeah. don't even have to think about it. I can just play the song in my head. I can close my eyes and sing my part in my mind. The body's going to make it happen. Like, so preparation would be number one. Yeah. Number two, and this only works if you're in a band, uh, or with a group of people or even just one other person, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Rehearsal, practice, being really, really comfortable as a, as an ensemble, as a group, whoever you're playing with. Um, we're, we're music, a lot of live performance nowadays doesn't get a lot of rehearsal. It depends on your yeah. situation, but particularly like when I was doing pickup gigs as a jazz player and stuff, I wasn't getting any rehearsals. I had to mm-hmm. show up and figure it out in the moment. That was the job. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which we're trained. We learned how to do that. But if you're really, really, really nervous in the first place, that ain't the way to do it. That's yeah. not, that is not the kind of gig to take. Take a, take a gig where you can get you, this band you and your friends have been working on and you guys are rehearsing plenty together, not, mm-hmm. not, not by yourselves, but as a group. I, I find that's very helpful. I, that alleviates a lot of nerves for me. If I know yeah. that, and no matter what happens, I can rely on the crew around me. Like that's right. a that's a big big part of it. And then again, what you're saying about the breathing and and some technical ends of that. So, I learned I need to focus on longer exhales. I would try to breathe and then like be like, well, now I'm getting lightheaded. What the heck's the problem? Oh. <laughs> I'm taking too much oxygen in and I'm not pushing out enough carbon dioxide. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I had to learn to actually exhale longer than I was inhaling for. You know what I mean? Because I was breathing like, oh, okay, oh, man. Yeah, and then, oh, then you're just oh. hyperventilating. Right, then you're just yeah. kind of hyperventilating, yeah. and I, was, I wasn't I was getting the benefit of the breathing. I was just over-oxygenating my body and not getting the carbon dioxide out of my body. So then I was like, and then right. sit, and then breathe. Okay, cool. But yeah. having that long exhale helped me tremendously Mm -hmm. so so that's another one i would go with just as far as a uh uh, physical tactic to try and get get past those those types of nerves Mm -hmm. it just it just brings you down it just calms you down and then i guess the other thing i would say is remembering you're strong enough like that's another one there's like little things you can remember in the moment that are easy to forget but remembering like okay the, the the best way i heard it put and i can't remember who said it it was a friend of mine who dealt with anxiety but they said telling yourself in the moment you're not in any danger remembering that mm-hmm. thought because your body thinks you're in danger it's your yeah. fight or flight that's i had a doctor tell me one time anxiety is when excitement gets out of control you mm-hmm. know what i mean when your excitement just goes too far and so you feel like you're you're in danger your your fight or flight is turned on and you need to try and turn it off and so again the yeah. breathing and um reminding yourself you're not in any danger you're you're physically yeah. fine like i know you don't feel that way but you're right. physically fine and then you can sum up your bravery 
and your bravery counts. You know yeah. what I mean? Everybody's got bravery in them. You know, it's it's being afraid and and you know, it's it's not a no fear thing. It's I am afraid, I'm gonna do it anyway. That's that's bravery mm-hmm. and that's that's commendable. And then you can stand on that at the next show that you're nervous about. You can go, Oh well, last one I was freaking out. But I got through it. I remembered, hey, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna stay strong. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna do this. I know how to do this. I've I've rehearsed. I'm 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 ready to go. I don't feel good, but that's okay. I'm gonna play through it. And then the more doing that more and more and more and more, and more I feel like alleviates it better over time. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. No, so I those, think yeah, kindness towards yourself mm-hmm. in like oh, like giving yourself the recognition internally of I did that even though I was right. freaking out can be really useful. Right. Yeah. And so I think the thing we keep coming back to is slowing down. Yeah. Slowing down in the moment mm-hmm. and and then focusing on these the positive affirmations you were talking about. And I, yeah. I feel like the you're not in any danger thing kind of applies there. You know what I right. mean? Like um and so how do you slow down? You start it starts with your breathing, you know. So don't do yeah. the caffeine. Drink plenty of water. Make sure you're good on your meals. That's another one like Yeah. You know, when we were on tour your meals were super sporadic. Okay, well, keep messing with your body like that and then wonder why it's going to start messing with you back. You yeah. know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. it's it, it, so making sure you've got you've had you've eaten at the right time, you know what I mean? Maybe mm-hmm. maybe don't have a huge meal immediately before you go on stage because right. you're going you maybe are going to feel lethargic and your blood's going to be running kind of slow. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's a real thing, but I love it when <laughs> when somebody's tired and you're like, "You got slow blood." Got uh, slow blood. <laughs> that one cracks me up. But I think, yeah. But when all the blood's in your stomach trying to digest, it kind of is going to slow your body down a little bit, you right? Know, that or eat something that's going to make you feel good. Like right. for me, I'm lactose intolerant. Mm. I don't need to eat, you know, half a pizza right before I go on stage, <laughs> or else my stomach's going to hurt the whole time, and I'm be like, right. "Why did I do that?" Yeah, right. Not exactly. like that's ever happened before. <laughs> I've never this. done that. Oof, I've. <laughs> Again, being on tour and stuff, sometimes that's when you get fed is right before the show. Well, that's the thing. So when, when like you're, in your experience being on tour then, mm-hmm. like, I mean, sometimes you have had no sleep. You can't right. eat like you want. You can't exercise like you would want. Mm-hmm. What do you do in those cases when you have to get up on stage and it's like just the circumstances have not allowed you to, you know, feel your best? Uh, all the things we were just talking about, slow down. You know, try yeah. to slow yourself down. I, I really feel like that's number one. Yeah. Try to slow down. Calm down the all that crazy noise in the back of your mind. Try and quiet that and then just focus on the, the, the affirmations that you're saying, the, the deep breathing. You can always drink water. And I feel like water plays a role. You know what I right. mean? Like drink, drink your water. Have water there with you and, and take nice steady sips and keep yourself hydrated in that because mm-hmm. i do think anxiety can come from being dehydrated you know what i mean um, yeah anything that's going to make your body feel kind of sick i think right. can contribute to it you know what i mean yeah um but yeah i used to do that kind of stuff and uh, um the the food thing too you know i learned how to snack really well <laughs> i yeah, know that sounds yeah. really weird but it's true i learned what snacks i could eat i'm not talking candy bars and chips and stuff you know what i mean like yeah. like uh, uh dried fruits and nuts and stuff like mm-hmm. that like i ended up doing a lot more of that kind of stuff that's something you can always it's an easy thing to throw in your bag have with you okay yeah. we don't have time to stop and sit down and have dinner okay cool well i'll have these good things and i will um uh, take a little walk if you've got time just a mm-hmm. little walk around it burn off some of the nervous energy yeah. Um, because that is, that is another thing. There's a, a, an appropriate level of show anxiety that, that does keep you on your toes and keep you sharp, which is good. Right. Yeah. Which is yeah. Good. Yeah. You don't want to just be completely like, yeah, oh, whatever. Right. You, you don't want to be stage. indifferent. Right. You want to do a good job. Yeah. You want to want to do a good job. Yeah. That's important. That really is important. But, but again, if it goes out of control and so it, it, learning how to manage that. And I think that comes with experience. I really do. Um, yeah. And I, I, I had a pretty long journey with the whole stage fright thing uh, mm-hmm. over time. And I'm, a, I'm a, uh, I don't know, last five, six, seven years, I've been in a pretty comfortable place with performing and it hasn't really popped up. Knock on wood. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I did, I had to kind of go through an evolution with it. It was, totally. it was, it was wild. And it was just, cause it was also what I was doing for a living. So then yeah. there would be like stakes like, oh man, well, okay. So if I do bad tonight, I'm not going to get this gig again. So then I'm not going to be able to pay my rent in three months, you know, something stupid yeah. like that. Yeah. But it's just, it's easy for your mind to go these different places and try to convince you that the stakes are higher than they actually are it is yeah no matter what the stakes are right yeah i I tell that to my 
students all the time. Like my, I teach, uh, just for anyone that doesn't know, I teach voice and piano mm-hmm. lessons and a lot of little, little kids. And so a lot of the kids I get, when we have our recitals, that's their very first mm-hmm. recital if they're a new student. And to see, like, y- you can see, you know, when, like when I've had kids for a couple years or whatever and, and the, after their first recital, it gets a little easier. And then after their right. second recital... But there's sometimes there's things that happen in some of the other performances that they really grab onto mm-hmm. and make really a lot bigger than it was. Like maybe they forgot a note and they're they're not oh, yeah. realizing that, you know, no, but nobody knew. And it, as long as and so one thing I stress to them, too, is to to keep going. If you, you know, yes. mess up, keep going at the very, you know, beginner, beginner level. If you miss a note, no one's going to know as long as you just keep it going mm-hmm. and like because I mean think of all the the performances that I think of all the performances I've you know seen where I bet people have made a thousand mistakes and I had no idea I mean every right. once in a while maybe you have an idea but I don't remember any of those specific instances yeah. it feels a lot heavier I think when it's you that you're focused mm-hmm. on you'll remember your mistakes right but right. it's not like everyone's sitting in that audience trying to you know pick you apart I think that's what makes auditions harder for me because the people yeah. that are sitting in the audience are trying to pick you <laughs> yeah, apart exactly. that's and that's hard to overcome. But I think if you can apply that same mindset of, you know, if you haven't got to do it over and over again yet, but just, and so you haven't maybe had the experience to show you that, you know, life will go on if you make a mistake. Right. You can say that to people all you want, but until you experience it, it kind of feels like life won't go on sometimes if you do make a mistake. But if you just remember the number of people that perform, the courage it takes to perform, mm. and that you know, ninety nine percent of the people that are going to be watching you are going to be rooting for you. Yeah. There's not you know, billions of people in the world just waiting for your downfall at your third piano recital, yeah, like, right. or your you know, gig on tour with a super famous musician. Like, it's just it doesn't work like that. So if you can extend the same kindness to yourself, I think it helps a lot. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> the same kindness. To yourself. Was that your little speech you prepared before the podcast? I didn't prepare that. <laughs> it's just helped me a lot. I think. Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. To to realize, I think just I think being really kind to yourself and mm-hmm. believing in yourself, even if you're faking it, can help. Yeah. You know, for sure. That fake it till you make it mm-hmm. concept, I think, has helped me a lot. Yeah. Like, even if I haven't felt fully prepared like I would have liked to for an audition or for mm-hmm. a gig if I can go in to it with the energy of you know like I got this if something goes wrong life will go on right. maybe some humor about you know th- things that have happened before like looking at it with a humorous mindset rather than a super bitter one like this one time I was playing a show and uh <laughs> the, p- the piano that I was playing this is a little bit of a tangent but mm-hmm. I was playing a keyboard I think it was at an open mic or maybe a writer's round or something. And the keyboard was really janky and like broken. Oh, no. And the stand in the middle of me playing, the stand just collapses. Oh, no. And the piano's <laughs> going down. <laughs> and so this person that was one of the people that was running it runs up, starts holding part of the piano up so I can finish. And so I would like was oh, 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 like trying to finish the song. Just like a random fluke thing. And then, of sure. course, I think the next thing I did, I like totally forgot a verse of my song or something because I was super thrown off. But and in the moment I was like, oh, that did not just happen. Well, sure. like that. It, was it your keyboard and stand or somebody else? It was someone else's. Okay. But then like because of that, there was something else where I like forgot something. Sure, and so I didn't feel like a... I played my best because right. it just set me off. Um, but then being able to over time kind of force myself to look at it as actually that's kind of hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like rather than, you know, that was that is pretty <laughs> that's funny. the end. That is pretty funny. I think that can help a lot just you know even if it's a less funny (laughs) outwardly funny situation if you look back and you're like okay but you know i'm here now that was just a right a blip and well and everybody's got something some sort of uh, a moment of chaos occurred in the middle of a set somewhere it's just inevitable you know 
Um, yeah. So as long as you can get back on track, that's the key. Like you said earlier, you know, just keep yeah. going, just keep going no matter what. Um, and yeah. honestly, people, people in the audience probably got a fun story out of that. Oh, this girl was <laughs> up there playing a piano. <laughs> the thing fell over. It Some dudes holding out. it up for the rest of the whole. <laughs> and she finished the song. You believe that? How about that? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's probably the mindset of, you know, because your initial reaction is like, oh, my gosh, people are like, what is happening? Like, right. she's falling apart. But yeah, you're right. Probably the audience was like, that was awesome. I would have thought it was cool. The song. Yeah. And that's what I would think, too, if I'm thinking of, you know, watching someone else that happened to. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's you make it a lot bigger when you're thinking about yourself and your own expectations on yourself. And that's what it is, is 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 you, you do it to yourself, I think. Yeah, I think more than anybody doing it to you, you're doing it to yourself. And so yeah. that's the thing, you know, if you can keep if you can remember that in the moment, you're, you're, you're probably you're not your own worst enemy. You're actually no. on your own side. So remember that. Remember, you want yourself to do well and and. If you make a mistake, you can forgive yourself. It's okay. It's a, it's definitely right. okay. It's probably important that you forgive yourself, you know? Yeah, and I think it helped me over time, too, hearing that more people experienced that oh, anxiety. Sure. Yeah. Well, like, that's I mean, kind of why we wanted to talk about this. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're Everybody listening right now and you're thinking, you know, oh, I'm the only person that's too scared to, you know, get up and, oh, and play, yeah, that's... It's everyone, even performers that, you know, perform all the time still mm -hmm. face this. So that, that helped me when I realized like, oh, wait, it's not, it's not just me that oh, only me that has these absurdly high expectations of myself that gives me anxiety, you know, right. every time. Right. It's, it's virtually everyone, I think, in mm -hmm. the field. So <laughs> yeah. you're not alone. <laughs> yeah. No, totally. I, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. Um, yeah. Well, that, I think, I think that, uh. What a lovely Halloween episode, you know? Yeah. We went we went all we went the other direction. People try to scare you at Halloween. Yeah. We're trying to teach you how not to be scared. Yeah, we're we're preparing you for Halloween so right. that so they can't get you at Halloween. <laughs> they can't get you, no. Yeah, you got uh yeah, you got to force yourself not to be frightened and yeah. be brave because you're never going to be able to force yourself to not actually be frightened. You're always going to feel it. Yeah. It's how your body it's how you react to it. It's how you react to yeah, it. Yeah, what and, you do with it. And yeah. it takes practice. It takes practice. So Yeah. So with any luck, somebody will hear this and find this helpful and then maybe go get on stage. Yeah, go play I your hope. Halloween songs for someone. Ooh, there you go. Some spooky scary yeah. skeletons. Or yeah. If you want if you want to start playing and you never have for other people, you could learn a song. I, I always love like learn a song, a holiday song and play it for your family oh, and friends yeah. or something. It's a good place to learn to a start. Halloween song. Yeah. That's a very good I know place it's a little start. late now, but I mean, you could still learn a Halloween song. You got two days. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I was like, when's <laughs> when Halloween? When comes I out, know, yeah. No, I know. <laughs> that's really funny. Uh, well, cool. Well, yeah. thanks for having the uh, conversation, Jillian. And it's yeah, great to be too. back in our old room, too. It's been, yes. It's, it's been, been a, a little while. Yeah. I don't know, right? We're re revamping, but... Uh, for people listening, we might start doing full episodes on YouTube coming up. But hey, you'll have to wait and see, won't you? <laughs> you'll you'll just have to, have tune to in. see. Spooky. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Appreciate it. 